In this series, we're going to be creating a basic poll with PHP. So I'm just going to show you around what this looks like, and then I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about the code. And then next, we'll go on to actually, uh, you know, creating the poll itself. So here you can see I've got two polls already set up. Now, these are set up in my database. You can see here that we've got an ID, a question and a start and an end date, which mean you can actually control the start and the end date for the poll. Um, the question's obvious, it's just displayed here on the page. So now I'm currently logged in as user one. Now we're not going to be talking about user authentication in this series because it's kind of a waste of time just to explain the uh, the functionality of a poll. So for now what we're doing is we're starting sessions in PHP. If you don't understand what these are, we'll be looking into it. And then we are creating uh, or assigning the value one to this user ID key in our session super global. All that means is that we're pretending that we're signed in as user with the ID of one. You may already have some kind of authentication system and I'm just going to assume I'm signed in as user one, which would obviously be the unique ID assigned to each user. So if we were to create another user, it would look like that. So we would we could also sign in as Billy. So um, the questions are displayed here. Um, we've got two poll options. You can see that if we actually go back to polls and we change one of these, so for example, if this one ended on the 22nd of the eighth month, uh, then that one wouldn't be displayed. So we have control uh, over what we can actually display here. Uh, let's just change that back and head over here. So I'm going to click on the first one and you can see here that we've got a main question, which we already know exists. And we've got now uh, a few options. These are stored in a separate database table just to make things a little bit easier. And a user can click on either one of these options and they can hit submit answer. So as soon as I do this, it's going to pr present me with a different view. And that's going to be a total percentage of all of the user's answers. So for example, uh, if I chose the first option here, uh, you can obviously see that uh, it gives us a little confirmation. You've completed the poll, thank you. And then we've got the first option as 100%, which is obvious. I'm the only user that's voted on this poll. And uh, the other two are at 0%, obviously. So let's actually uh, take a look inside poll answers here. You can see that's been logged as well, as well as the choices here. We'll obviously be going over this later. Let's go ahead and sign in as user 2. So once we do that, you'll then see this returns back to me not being able to uh, or me not have completing it because I'm now technically signed in as a different user. So if I now choose the second option, that's obviously going to split the first and the second option at 50-50 and so on and so forth. So however many people vote, uh, you'll see the percentages. So this is a really short, easy, simple, but effective way to uh, allow you to create a poll. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, the code is fairly straightforward and we'll get started in the next video.